As the call for the repatriation of African artifacts taken during war and colonialism intensifies in Europe and the United States, a new narrative is emerging about ownership and cultural identity. Oliwa Toyin Sogbisan is a cultural historian and curator, and she welcomes the new reality. She told Zoe Ludaki it gives young people in her country of Nigeria an important opportunity to connect with, as she put it, the kingly objects of their ancestors. Welcome to Straight Talk Africa, Dr. Salmaxan. I want to start with a definition. What are the Benin bronzes? Not all of them are bronze objects, but they're easily called bronzes for easy identification. It's a Seperdu uh, technology, the lost wax technology. It's not all of them that are bronzes, that are full bronzes like that. But they are kingly objects, so to speak, that have showed the authority, the pristine nature of royalty within the African people, especially within the Edo people. So um, they immortalize their, their kings, they immortalize the great people amongst them using this technique. So the, the artists have continued to use this technique and they're still working using that technique in Benin. These are just objects that People are taught at the time we're not from Africa. And now it's interesting. Everybody knows they're African objects. So um, the, the capaciousness, the uh, intelligence, the creativity of Africa has come forth through the works of our forefathers. We seem to be at a point in time where institution is becoming a reality. It's no longer an alien concept. Of course, it took over a century for this to happen. Do you see this as a sincere gesture or is it a kind of a political move from the former colonial powers? I'll say the time has come. Uh, from different perspectives, one can see it from a, as a political maneuver, but the mere fact that it's been acknowledged and it's become a buzzword, a buzzword in the sense that it's not just within the institutions anymore. It's not just within the political party anymore. Different artists in art group and different academic circles are now talking about it in a more open conversation. I think the time is now and the time is right. If they're going to act on it sincerely, that's question in itself, but that they're acknowledging it, it is good enough for me. What would you say to museums like uh, the British Museum that offer the option of loaning objects to the countries of origin instead of returning? Actually, the Edo Museum objects that will come, I believe, mainly from the British Museum will be on loan. Loaning is different than returning. You can only keep what I give you to keep. Say, for instance, my mom's ornamental diamonds, I give them to Zoe, then you have a right to keep that. But after the punitive expedition, as they put it, of 1897, you don't have a right to keep what has been stolen. There's so many questions that are not being answered. I welcome the tour. It's a touring exhibition. Nigeria is one of the stops. Yeah, right. We will go and say it. But we just want to know when the discussion about the restitution, proper restitution of what it means will happen, if it will happen. So you're saying you're giving back. You're giving me back for six months, for two months, for three months. Then that's not giving back. That's a loan. Because the objects can as well go on a tour for such a number of months. Also, if you're saying restitution, they've come up with restitution permanent and temporary. We need to really have a better understanding. Temporary restitution is as good as a loan. 
There's no need agreeing to that. It's a different case. If we're saying, oh, yeah, right, they've been with you for a while. We come to terms. You could keep them. But any time we need them, we'll come for them. And there's, you know, an open agreement to that. That's a different case. But just say, oh, we're just going to give it on a loan because, in quote, maybe uh, Africa might not be able to keep their stock themselves. We've been keeping them even before they were looted. So why can't we keep them now? In a recent interview you gave about the Benin bronzes, you made an interesting statement. You said that observing objects through a glass is a colonial concept. What is the African way? The Africa has three stages of museums. And what do I mean by that? A museum is a place where you keep your relics, your history or artifacts that identifies or proves the history or uh, um, kind of put, puts that authority upon a story. And it tells the story of a people or of cultures that have gone into extinction. So in, in the African setting, the first type of museum is the home, within the home. So in the home, you could have a place where you put your mementos, your family relics, your family, maybe if you're traditional worshippers, it might be your deity, and then you decorate such a place. It's a place where when your visitors come in, they know who you are. They know maybe you're from the Ifa family. They know maybe you're from the, you know, they, they tend to know your identity from there. You move on from that stage then to the shrines. The shrines are places where you keep some of these deities, the Ibeji dolls, for instance, you know, uh, 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 the Obalufo mask, the Oriolokun, the bronzes, you know, uh, it, depending on what they're used for. So then the shrines you could, will be a place where you will see some of these artifacts of value. The third layer will be the palaces. The palaces in Africa are the institutional buildings. And then they are the kings, the chiefs, they are custodians of culture. So that will be the final place where you'll find lots and lots of what makes up that community, of what helps you to identify that community and of the best of their works and their wares. The ones in the king's palaces won't be kept behind glass, so to speak, but they'll be kept safe in such a way that they're brought out. It's just like when you have a guest, you bring out your best of Chinas to serve that guest. They're brought out during either festivals or they're brought out when there's an important guest or they, they, there's something that the community is celebrating and they need to bring these artifacts out as part of that celebration. The colonial contexts tend to put it in a box. It does not only become what you would say sacred, so to speak, but then it becomes the untouchable because they're kept in safety. And then the people have to talk about themselves through these objects that are in boxes. In Africa, the objects that are sac sacred are kept by the priest or priestesses, and they can touch, they can show the children or generations even yet unborn, and the people are free with these artifacts. But in the uh, colonial kind of setting of museums, they're alienated from the people. There's no connection. In Benin City in Nigeria, there are plans underway to build the Edo Museum of West African Art. A very well-known architect has been enlisted for that, David Ajaye. Actually, he is the one that here in DC, he built the Museum of African American History and Culture. And the concept is, the concept is for the museum to look like the palace from the ancient kingdom of Benin. What are your thoughts on this? We will tell a lie to say we've not had um, any influence from the West and the West hasn't had any influence from Africa. So we're looking at a new Africa. For me, that's not telling of a past. That's a new ideology of museum. And it's very welcomed. It's very welcomed because it shows we've moved, we're, we're moving on and it's showing the new thoughts, so to speak, that the new youths of Africa might be looking at. It is still quite inclusive because if you look at the plan of the M1, it's not just the museum. There are different things that will be happening in it. The artists have a space in it. There are spaces in it for different festivals. There are spaces in it for the collections. So it's not just the museum for just collections. 
different other activity, communal activities will go on within it. So I think I, I personally welcome it. Um, my only concern is Nigeria has about 90 museums and amongst that is 52 public museums already existed. In Benin, there's a central museum that is in the middle of the town, in the roundabout that is very central and you can see it easily. I would have uh, kind of uh, suggested that pending when a more one is being built and these collections are on loan, in quote, they can be showcased in this museum. It kind of awakens the museum setting, the institution within the community. It allows people to become inclusive part of this loan, in quote, or restitution, a kind of designed restitution, in quote, and then the people feel it's a place where they could go, pending when a more one comes up, if it comes up. I think what's interesting right now is that the, whether the restitution is permanent or temporary, it has mobilized the West and uh, I feel it has empowered African institutions. Is this a historic moment? Hi Zoe, I am hopeful. I am very, very hopeful for the museum sector in Nigeria, in Africa, so to speak. I am hopeful because the restitution debate, the talks, the narratives has allowed them wake up. At least they know they have a responsibility. And I am hopeful that in time, even if it's the loan and it doesn't come back fully, uh, the museums are able to sit up, look at what we have, be able to engage our youths. They're able to see the art and critically look at these things and able to see what is the way forward. What are the new things we can make? If our forefathers did create the Beanie Bronzes, then it's a challenge for me, my children, my grandchildren yet unborn, to make new things. So there must be a Picasso. There must be a, you know, we have great artists here and there must be someone, somewhere amongst the African continent was willing and ready to produce new objects. So yes, I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful for the museums. I'm hopeful. So do you think that the restitution will become the new trend, the new reality for the museums of the West? Oh, definitely, definitely. I, I know the, there's been a change, there's been a shift, and the shift is awakening. And I know there will be a result at the end of the day. Yes, yes. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you, Zoe. Thank you.